So secret to romantic relationships, Andrew Huberman and Lex Friedman. Let's see if we can point out a little bit of red pill things, or let's see if we could gain some knowledge from Lex Friedman, the incel, quite literally involuntarily celibate, asking guys like Andrew Huberman about relationships. Let's see the, what's the secret to romantic relationships. I want to know. I want to know. I'm going to like up this video. Let's go. So choose your mate wisely, and that's perhaps the good segue into sexual selection. Oh, humans. I could tell you you're good at this. <laughs> oh, damn. That was already that was already lit. That was already great advice. <laughs> uh, we said, well, why did I bring up sexual selection? It's the relationship. So um, sexual selection and humans. You've, I, I don't think you've done an episode on relationships. No, I did um, an episode on attachment. Right. Um, but not on relationships. The The series with Conti includes one episode of the four that's all about relational understanding and how to select a mate based on um, matching of drives and all the 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 the, the demons inside the subconscious how to, how to match demons and, that they and, dance well together or what and how generative two people are what does that mean means that um how the way he explains it is how devoted to creating growth within the context of the family, the relationship with work. Well, let me ask you about mating rituals and uh, how to find such a relationship. I mean, you're really big on friendships, on the value of friendships. I am. Um, and that, I think, extends... Okay, so they didn't really go in too much to sexual... Uh, well, what was it? Sexual selection. They, they really did not do a good job at really going into it. But obviously, for the people that don't know... You should be aware of the traits that you look for in a woman, right? You should look at your grandparents. You should look around you and look at the relationships that were able to be intact. You should study the habits that have helped them stick together for such a long amount of time. When you have done this, you're going to come to the realization that, oh, crap, why is it that my grandma and my grandpa were able to be together for this long period of time without being divorced without separating why is that it's because they understand there's a dynamic to the relationship they understand their positions right and they understand how they what their strengths and weaknesses in their own gender roles and how they complement each other in a relationship at the end of the day when you're a man you have to understand the woman controls the sex the man controls the relationship okay what does that mean it means he chooses who he is going to give the ring to at the end of the day. He chooses who's going to be his girlfriend. You never see a woman out here wanting to actually, oh, I want that guy to be my boyfriend, and she wants to provide and protect for him. It doesn't work that way. No girl wants to do that. Female nature rejects that because that's not in their instincts to do so. They don't want to provide and protect for a man. Therefore, they're not going to select and look for a guy to be like, yeah, I want that guy to be my boyfriend. I'm going to do everything I can to make it my boyfriend. No. They get approached by several different men, and the way that guy approaches them, they're able to instinctively say, I want to follow him, right? And remember, this is all led by the guy understanding the standards that he wants in relationships, looking for good behavioral patterns in the woman that will dictate, damn, this girl will be able to follow me for a long time as long as I remain a high-value man. Right. So it's a long journey. So that's truly how you get into the sexual selection. Right. It's not about just like uh, just choosing. It's understanding the standards that you need to have. A lot of them are for a guy. You need to look for a woman that is very look at her fam. Look at her background. Right. Look at her parents. Look at how look at her relationship with her mother and father. Right. What did she learn from them? How they interact with each other? What did she take from that? How does she, what does she take from that? And how does she enact that in her everyday lifestyle, right? If she enjoys cooking, if she enjoys making food and you don't have to convince her to make food or you don't have to convince her, then she's already predispositioned to want to do those things. You don't want to force a person to do those things, right? These are the things that men usually want, right? If you're working all day and you're pro providing and protecting the girl, right? She's going to make sure you have a full belly. That's a good standard. That's just one standard out of many standards, right? Another one being uh, agreeable, right? Wanting to follow your lead without having to backtalk you and always constantly condescending you and putting you down and shaming you for trying to lead, right? Trying to be with an obnoxious, crass, rude woman 
is only going to lead to your detriment. So that's very important in understanding sexual selection. Itself into a, one of the deepest kinds of friendships you can have, which is a romantic relationship. What uh, what uh, uh, mistakes, successes, and wisdom can you impart? Well, I've certainly made some mistakes. I've also made some good choices in this realm. Um, first of all, we have to define what sort of relationship we're talking about. If if one is looking for a life partner, you know, potentially somebody to establish family with, with or without kids, with or without pets, right? Families can take different forms. Um, I mean, I certainly experienced being a family in a prior relationship where it was the two of us and our two dogs, and it was like, it was family, like we had our little family. Um, I think based on my experience and based on input from friends who themselves have very successful relationships, I, I must say I've got friends who um, are in long-term monogamous, very happy uh, relationships where there seems to be um, a lot of love, a lot of laughter, a lot of challenge, and a lot of growth. And both people, it seems, really want to be there and enjoy being there. Just to pause on that, one thing to do, I think, by way of advice, is listen to people who are in long-term successful relationships. That's like, uh, it seems dumb, but like, like uh, we both know. No, 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 that's actually not dumb at all. That's very, very smart and intuitive, right? To listen to people that are in long-term relationships. That's why I say, go look at your grandparents if they're together to this day, right? Look at older people who've been with each other for 30, 40, 50 years, right? Understand that they have a dynamic that works for them. Adopt that dynamic. That dynamic is always 90% of the time going to be they can comprehend that there's a dominant, there's a masculine, and there's a feminine, a dominant and a submissive, right? There's a hierarchy in the household. They're going to understand this power dynamic and they respect it because they respect each other. They complement each other. You're going to see that in long relationships and the habits that they have, they both have their strengths and weaknesses, right? Like it's important to study those things. Yo, what's up, Doctor Durden? Shout out to you, Tyreek. What's up, bro? Um, so one thing for the path for the lives, I'm gonna keep them up, but I'm clipping them up for the YouTube. I want to make sure people show up to the actual lives. If you're gonna interact, interact now. Like up the video, share the video if it's provided you any kind of value. Don't forget, only if it provides value, like the video and share it. If not, then I gotta do a better job. Let's be honest, <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna keep them up for a. I'm gonna keep up the live streams for a bit, and then I'm gonna take them down um, to make sure you know we we show up, we show up, bro. And if not, they get clipped up, so don't worry about it. Doctor Durden, I'm in Colombia. Don't have to pull teeth to get the women to cook for you here. They actually get mad when a man enters the kitchen. <laughs> bro, you see, this is why I'm reacting here. I'm doing what I gotta do. My girl's in the kitchen. The only time I get in the kitchen, and this is something that this personally I do, not every guy has to do, but. One thing in Russia, in Russian uh, tradition is like, if the food is good, the guy like does the dishes. Like, I don't mind actually going in the kitchen and doing the dishes. I don't find it like as a responsibility or as like a duty. I genuinely want to do it after I eat the food because I've seen the girl like work, you know what I'm saying, behind the kitchen. And like, I just, I just help out. I help out. Or we just throw it in the, in the, in the dish, in the dishwasher because that's exactly what I bought it for. <laughs> So that, there's a good trade-off, man. You want to be able to, to to trade. But yeah, like a good woman doesn't want you in the kitchen, bro. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> she only wants you in the kitchen just to keep her company, make her laugh, provide her a good experience. Right, babe? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, she said, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, they cooking from scratch as well. No lazy 30-minute. Yeah, no, no, no. My girl does. Babe, babe, babe. What do you think about, what do you think about cooking? You, you cook from scratch, right? Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about the 30-minute meals? I don't know, like those quick, like throw it in the oven or like throw it in a microwave meal shit. She says she's never heard of it. She don't even care about things like that. That's funny. Uh, keep the live debates up though. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We did a li we did a, li a little bit of a live debate. I'm going to keep trying to jump into more panels. It's like, I'm just very busy, bro, but I'm going to do my best. So let's keep watching. My friends with Joe Rogan, who's been in a long-term, really great relationship. And he's been an inspiration to me. So you take advice from that guy. Definitely. 
And several members of my podcast team are in excellent relationships. I, I think um, one of the things that rings true over and over again in the advice and in my experience is, you know, find someone who's really a great friend, like build a really great friendship with that person. Now, obviously not just a friend if we're talking romantic relationship, but, okay. um, and of course sex is super important, but it should be a part of that particular relationship alongside or meshed with the friendship. Uh, can it be a majority of the, the positive exchange? I suppose it could, but I think the friendship piece is extremely important because what's required in a successful relationship clearly is joy in being together, trust, a desire to share experience, both you know mundane and, and more uh, adventurous, um, support each other, um, acceptance, um, a real, uh, maybe even admiration, but certainly delight in being with the person. You know, earlier we were talking about peace, and I think that that sense of peace comes from knowing that the person you're in friendship with or that you're in romantic relationship or ideally both, because let's assume healthy relation, the best romantic relationship includes a friendship component with that person. It's like you just really delight in their presence, even if it's a quiet presence. Um, the only problem with trying to give advice when it comes to friendship and relationships is that a lot of guys tend to prioritize the friendship because that's like the fundamental layer. They're like, oh yeah, I got to treat her like a, like, like a friend, like I treat my other friends. And a lot of guys just end up getting friend zoned because they're too nice, right? Here's the, here's the reality is that in a re romantic relationship, there's a certain point where you have to lead. And when it comes to leading, you have to put your foot down. You have to have a certain tone, right? Because you want the other person to follow you. When it comes to a friendship with your boy, for example, right? Like more than likely you guys should be competing in a healthy way where sometimes you're following him you're following his lead sometimes he's following your lead right you understand the trade-off between that and the respect between men and uh their physicality or, or or whatever it is right when it comes to romantic relationships a woman a good woman want if you're a good man a good woman wants to follow you right so you need to be able to distinguish, hey, this is not a friendship. We are not friends. We are in a relationship. You are with me, okay? What does it mean to be with me? It means these are the standards that I have. These are the boundaries that I have. These must be respected at all costs, right? If she wants to go clubbing, she can go clubbing, but she's not going to be my girlfriend anymore. If my boy wants to go clubbing, he can go clubbing. We're still going to be friends. That's the difference between a friendship and a relationship, right? And you delight in seeing them delight in things, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's clear. Uh, the trust piece is huge, um, you know, and, and that's where people start. I, you know, we don't want to focus on what works, not what doesn't work, but that's where I think people start engaging in these covert contracts. They're afraid of being betrayed, so they betray. Mm -hmm. Um, they're afraid of giving up too much vulnerability, so they hide their vulnerability, or in the worst cases, they feign vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's a covert contract that, that just simply undermines everything. It becomes one plus one equals two minus one to infinity. Conversely, I think if people can have really hard conversations, this is something I've had to work really hard on in recent years and that I'm still working hard on, but the friendship piece seems to be the thing that rises to the top when I talk to friends who are in these great relationships. It's like mm -hmm. they, they have so much respect and love and joy in being with their friend. It's the person that they want to spend as much of their non-working, non-platonic uh, friendship time with and the person that they want to experience things with and share things with. And, um, and it sounds so kind of canned and cliche nowadays but i know it doesn't sound canned and cliche it sounds simpy why because when a guy starts to view his girlfriend as a friend they start to treat their girlfriend like every other person out there you have to understand your girl means something she's a lot more special than the friend than the other friends that you have right you need to have full control over this relationship in a non-abusive way obviously right if you're a man with wisdom you understand this 
a lot of guys get so lost and derailed when they start to prioritize oh but we need to make sure the friendship aspect of my relationship is being prioritized it's silly right right because like the girl doesn't gain arousal from being friends with you right she may find it comforting she may find it you know like a nice moment but eventually you'll turn into like that comforting, nice guy. Like you're not like that mysterious dude that she first got with, right? So you want to be able to make sure that you're not overly being too friendship, spending all your time with her because then how much time are you spending providing? How much time are you spending acquiring resources? Zero. If you're prioritizing, oh, I need to make sure the friendship is good, right? No, you want to prioritize providing and acquiring resources first so that you're able to provide for your family you're able to provide for your woman once you're done with that then go ahead and hang out with your girl no problem you've earned the ability to do so but before that you prioritize friendship over acquiring resources you're just going to become a simp that's silly if you step back and examine how most people go about finding a relationship so like oh like am i attracted of course physical attraction is important other forms of attraction too and they sort of enter through that portal, which makes sense. That's that's the mating dance, right? That's the mm -hmm. peacock situation. That's hopefully not the cuttlefish situation. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but I think that um, there seems to be a history of people close to me getting into great relationships where they were friends for a while first, or maybe didn't sleep together right away. Yeah, that they actually intentionally deferred on that. Um, this has not been my habit or my experience. You know, I've gone the more, um, I think, typical, like, oh, there's a, an attraction like this person, there's an interest, you kind of explore all dimensions of relationship really quickly, except perhaps the moving in part and the having kids part. Boom, um, you see, this dude is actually based. He's just trying to give Lex Friedman the general soft advice. He's not trying to be stone hard. This is how it should be. This is how it should be for everyone. He's just trying to be like, you know, like maybe you should be friends first and just explore being friends first. And then maybe she'll be aroused by you. That's dumb. Like, let's be honest. Andrew Huberman, this dude is based in his own life, but when he's giving other people advice, he's not being honest. He's being like, I'm going to be more soft in general with it, right? So you, you got to be able to cut through the BS. Let's be honest. That That's that's why I like reacting to these because you want to cut through the BS and you want to be able to see, yo, what is he really saying and what is he doing, right? A lot of the times you'll see feminists do this. They'll say one thing, but they'll do the other. You'll see blue pill guys do this. They'll say one thing, but they'll do the other, right? follow what they do and don't worry so much about what they say which ideally because it's a bigger step harder to undo without um more severe consequences but i think the whole take it slow thing um i don't think is about getting to know someone slowly i think it's about that physical piece because that does change the nature of the relationship and i think it's because it gets right into the more hardwired primitive circuitry around our feelings of of safety vulnerability um you know there's something about uh romantic and sexual interactions where it's almost like it's like assets and liabilities mm -hmm. right where people are trying to figure out how much to engage their time and their energy and multiple people i'm talking about from both sides you know male female or whatever it sides but where it's like assets and liabilities and, and that, that's where it starts getting I, um, into those complicated contracts early on, I think. And so maybe that's why if a really great friendship and admiration is, is established first, even if people are romantically and sexually attracted to one another, then that piece can be added in a little bit later in a way that really kind of just seals up the whole thing. And then who knows? Maybe you see, they you see that that's the problem. Even Andrew Huberman, I don't know if he's married or not, but. What he's trying to say is that the very last piece is the financial aspect, which is marriage, which is like having these kids, which is like giving the girl more power, more leverage. That's how you end up losing in the relationship, bro. Like you're, you're saving that for the last because you know you're saving that at the end and you know it's so hard for you to trust somebody with, with, with uh, you know, business and finances and all that because you've acquired it. You've built it up yourself and you want to give it to someone else. You want to give all that power to someone else who is probably not going to do make the same decisions that you do. You want to train your girl to be financially dependent the way you are. That's silly. Like, like that's not your, her objective. 
you guys both have different objectives, right? Her objective is to be nurturing, is to be a, a complementary aspect in your life, right? Is to understand, hey, where can I help him so that he could acquire more resources for the family, right? If you're saying that, oh, she should run businesses the way you're running businesses, then how is she going to raise the family? Like you can't have time for everything. And a lot of people want to make their partner like a business partner when in reality, like it's not the best compliment when you're trying to start a family. Might be good before you start the family, might be good 18 years after you've raised the kids. Sure, could work. But in reality, like it's it's going to lead to your detriment, detriment if you start prioritizing those things. And 90% of their time having sex, I don't know. Um, that That's not for me to say or, or, or decide, obviously. Like they're talking but to the there's field something life. there about staying out of a certain amount of um, uh, risk of having to engage covert contract in order to protect oneself. You see, you see how slow he had to articulate that? Because he's like, I don't want to say anything that might sound slightly misogynistic. <laughs> that's the truth but I, I do think like uh love at first sight this kind of idea is uh in part realizing very quickly that you are great friends like i've had that interesting experience of friendship recently it's just it's not, not really friendship but like oh you get each other with, with humans not uh, not in a romantic setting right friendship yeah, just friendship. Well, but not, I, but dare I say, I felt that way about you. When I'm yeah. gonna be honest, I think Lex Friedman really is harping onto this idea of love at first sight. Like, I'm just gonna set and lock eyes with someone, and they're just gonna be a part of my life, and it's gonna be amazing. And to be completely honest, I have seen that kind of work in some cases where you just kind of lock eyes with somebody. But remember, it's not gonna just happen like you just lock eyes, and it's just, everything's gonna happen. You have to become that guy first to the point where when somebody looks at you, you know who you are. You know what you've been through. You know who you are in that room. When that girl looks at you, she's like, that dude looks confident. He's engaging with me. He looks good. He smells good. He dresses well, right? Like people are talking about him. I want to. I want him to come approach me. I want him to come talk to me. That's not really love at first sight. That took a lot of time for you to build the right that confidence first to build yourself up as a man for some girl to be able to look at you and be like yeah i want him right it takes time and it takes effort but the whole idea of love at first sight is just it's a ridiculous notion that most guys harp onto because they buy into the idea of disney movies and that unconditional love and that's not the reality of life ultimately that leads to your detriment you have to let go of the idea of love at first sight and understand that every single girl that you look at could potentially be yours and then you have to start mate selecting you have to have the standards in the behind your head and as soon as you approach her and she starts to like you now it's the process of elimination right it's start literally mentally taking down her habits and seeing yeah i don't like this i don't like this this is not gonna this is not gonna create a good wife this is not gonna create blah blah, blah. like all these things and then you start to either try to plant seeds and see, hey, maybe she'll be receptive. Maybe she wants to be a part of my lifestyle. Maybe she wants to change for me because I'm that guy, right? If she wants to do that, boom, that's the girl for you. Now it just takes time for her to actually show you show you that she wants to um, live up to your standards, right? They, that, that's what it means to be a leader and to have a follower. Like That's what it means to have that kind of relationship. You met, right? But we also like, this dude's cool and he's smart and he's funny and he's driven and he's giving and he um and he's got an edge and um like I wanna wanna learn from him, wanna hang out with him. Like that I mean that was the beginning of our friendship was essentially, you know, that set of, of internal realizations. Just keep going, just keep going. Like, keep oh, going and a sharp comments. dresser, you yeah, know, yeah, it just, just looks just, great shirt. <laughs> like freedom is like let him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook now. <laughs> listen, on horseback, yes. No, no, no. It's, listen, I mean, it's, it, uh, despite what some people might say on the internet, it's a purely platonic um, friendship. Uh, somebody said, uh, somebody asked if uh, Andrew Huberman has a girlfriend, and somebody says, I think so. And the, the, the third comment was, this really 
like uh breaks my heart like that uh lex and andrew are not a, a not, not an item we are not we are great friends but we are not an item yeah, that's true well. it's official the um uh <laughs> it's i hear over and over again from it's a bit sus. friends that have made great choices and awesome partners and have these fantastic relationships for long periods of time that continue seem to continue to thrive at least that's what they tell me and that's what i observe you see how he talks about it he's like this is the bot narrative i just have to recite on Mike friedman's podcast because his audience are kind of robotic like they're liberals like he knows who he's talking to so he's like i gotta i gotta i gotta slow when i'm giving this advice i gotta uh, what is it like i gotta tippy toe across this shit because i don't want to i don't want to offend no one establish the friendship first and give it a bit of time before sex and so that's such terrible that's so terrible advice bro it's so terrible advice i wouldn't say like establish friendship first i get rid of the friendship start first establish the premise right why would she want to be with you who are you right who are you what do you do are you like what are you proud of what's your skill set what do you what do you want to become in life know all these things before you meet her become those things actively start doing those things and you're going to start to exude that energy in front of people right because now because remember when your body language when you start to enact things your body language is going to start reflecting the things you do in real life right so when you're confident in what you're doing in real life it's going to come across when you're communicating to it with other people and women pick this up because 80% of communication is body language, right? So forget the premise. So sorry, forget the friendship, state the premise, right? Why is she with you? Why should she be with you? Give her a narrative, right? What is she going to be in your life? You'll see a lot of the times when you watch like maybe E-dates or like you just see people like being romantic or flirtatious with each other. It's always the guy saying, hey, like painting the narrative in her head of like, yeah, me and you, we're going to go out one day. We're going to go to dinner and we're going to be arguing like for like a 40 year old couple. Right. But at least you're going to look bad as hell in the, in the dress and I'm going to get you. Boom. You just stated a prim You see, it's like it's already me and her in a situation doing this as soon as I met her. Right now she knows, oh, this guy is here to try to catch me like a Pokemon. Right. Like that's the energy you want to exude. Not some friendship, weird, nice guy vibe right that's how you get played you know i think that's the feeling that's the feeling and and these are we're talking micro features and macro features we're talking you know and this isn't about perfection it's actually about the imperfections which is kind of mm -hmm. cool i like quirky people i like characters i'll tell you where i've gone badly wrong and where i see other people going badly wrong let's see if there is no rule that says that you have to be attracted to all attractive people by any means, it's very important to develop a sense of taste mm -hmm. in romantic attractions. I believe what you really like in terms of a certain style, you know, a certain way of being, and of course that includes. You see, uh, he's trying to be all inclusive. The reality is what of what he's trying to say is just standards. Have standards in your women, right? What does the RP say? He's not going to say it, but low body count, right? So that she hasn't essentially, she doesn't carry all that emotional damage with her to the relationship with you. Because a lot of people are not disciplined. A lot of people just follow whatever the TV tells them, follow whatever social media tells them. Put yourself in the shoes of a girl, right? If you're a girl, you get all this attention from a bunch of different guys. Your eight, feminists are telling you, yo, just hop on from one guy to another guy. Your body count don't matter, blah, 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 right? She's never going to actually think of, how do I actually keep a guy? Like, I keep leaving these guys, and the guys that I actually want keep leaving me. Like, how do I actually change? She's not being led in the right way. And it's up to you as a man to be able to lead her, right? And that's why, and, and how do you do that? By having standards of your own, understanding what you want from a woman boom boom all right all right i'm done with this let, 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 let's go through some comments real quick uh let's see i 100 percent agree about making sure your person of interest can even be a friend before you have you know intercourse with them 
I waited a few months to go really to really know my husband before intimacy and IMO it gave us a stronger foundation to work with well <sighs> okay it's kind of weird I mean I don't like the idea of women really making a man wait for that long like you should like a woman more or less the more a woman more or less knows whether she wants to f kill or marry a man honestly within like a few like a like a few minutes within the interaction i'm gonna be honest right why because of the setting how he presents himself who he is right how he communicates all these things come with experience uh let's see does it create a stronger foundation though maybe i guess maybe i don't know it's kind of weird I, I do have guys say like basically if they f a girl on the first date they won't take her seriously i don't think it really matters bro i, I don't think whether whether you do or you don't i guess it, it could give you an indication of whether of how promiscuous she is right how easy she is so yeah withholding into withholding intercourse it, it's it doesn't make sense to me to be honest it doesn't make too much sense to me uh, let's see. We have been together for 15 plus years and are still going strong. We've had incredibly tough times where I thought it wouldn't work out. But at the end of the day, when you know someone's heart is yours, you, yours provided that you don't abuse it, great things can happen. The bond is as strong as the effort you put in. I'm not knocking casual intercourse, but I never rely the need to try it deeper connections have been very fulfilling so this is a good girl this, this sounds like actually a woman that has like a low body count and uh it seems like she had some level of like self-respect uh waiting a few months though it's not necessary it's not gonna make the relationship stronger or less strong right you a lot of the times women will adopt this when they've had a lot of bodies right women with a few bodies will just naturally wait because like they just want to make sure that's the dude and at the end of the day as a guy like when you deal with a girl with like a low body count like you'll understand like yeah like she's gonna want to make sure you're that guy first so that much i can comprehend but like when she's like actively listening to some feminist crap about like how you should make the guy wait because that's gonna help your relationship that's silly as hell it's like it's not true uh i agree completely about the getting to know each other first and how important it is to build up a true friendship you see now, now you're just literally giving every now it's like most guys are just going to be like yeah like friendship first friendship first you don't want to prioritize that prioritize premise platonic relationship with a friend is spot on forget dude everybody's taking the blue pill now bro that's crazy i'm still betting lex has a wife and 13 kids in russia I'm gonna be honest. I think Lex rejects this. Re re rejects this, bro. He, I think he don't like Russian culture as much. I don't know. I don't know. That was the biggest mistake when I was younger. If I developed a strong friendship with a male friend, I could only see them in light, strictly platonic. I was completely closed off to the idea of developing a romantic relationship. Just glad I know better now. Okay, here's the thing with here's the, here's the thing with people confusing about friendship, right? I think they they. A woman wants to make sure that she's so comfortable with the man first, right? And she's she wants to make sure that he's capable of leading her in the right direction. But a lot of the times they go through the woe phase and, uh, right, they just get caught up in getting drunk and just, like, they get frustrated and even they want they want to be with someone and they just see their friends going out and having a bunch of promiscuous things. And remember, it's like their friends plus, plus uh, social media – Plus, the culture that they're living in is doing what? It's propelling them towards being woes. Let's be honest. That's what they're doing, right? She belongs to the streets. All right. Let's see what you guys are saying. That was a good video, though. That was a great video.